Hey everyone, Avelina Damore here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming part two of my question and answer video. I cannot believe that we needed to do this in two parts. That is insane. So yeah, I thought I'd just pick right up from where we left off and continue with your questions. Angel asks, are there any other styles or subcultures that would interest you? Oh, you guys put me on the spot. My heart will always lie with goth, dark, macabre. Um, when I was younger, I really enjoyed punk. You know, kind of like goth came from punk, didn't it? But um, can't really say I'm into that <laughs> anymore. I do really appreciate it. I don't think I'd ever personally try to incorporate that element into my look, but I do um, really like Visual K. There are some really full-on looks, and I think that takes a lot of dedication to get done up like that. As does this. I mean, you know, we don't wake up like this. Big Bad She Wolf says, how cute is still running around with that bubble machine? Yeah, I know. He, <laughs> he seriously breaks my heart every day. He's so cute. Bella asks, do I have an unpopular goth opinion? Hmm. Probably just on the cure. I don't like them. <laughs> I know it's like proper goth etiquette that you're supposed to like them, but I really don't enjoy their music. It's really happy. And apart from, you know, the singer wearing a little bit of black and like eyeliner and dyeing his hair black, I don't get it. But you know, if you do, that's fine. <laughs> My opinion, not yours. Okay, the next question is, as you design bags, you could do a what's in my everyday bag video. I like that idea. I've wanted to um, do that tag for a really long time. I also want to do um, the, my husband does my makeup tag because I think that would just be a lot of fun. So I just need more time to be able to do all these things. The camera doesn't seem to be straight and it's, it's annoying me. Ah! Okay, the next question is from Layla. Have you ever had a paranormal experience or a scary stalker experience? Hmm. I haven't had either really. Um, <laughs> I've had a scary as hell experience. It's kind of funny. I think I may have spoken about this in part one. So in case I did, I'm only gonna recap on it very, very quickly, but I was home alone and I'm sure I heard someone knocking and I ran down my parents' hallway and there was a sliding door at the end of it and I just, it was dark, I didn't turn the lights on and I just ran into the door and the door came off the hinges and bang, hit the floor and there was a big crash and I was like, ah, <laughs> scared the hell out of me. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, thought it was a ghost or something like that. So not really paranormal at all. Just kind of reminds me of that. Stalkerish, no, not really. Rachel asks, who would your dream collab be? I personally would love to see you collab with Ash Costello. Oh, yes, I love Ash. I love New Year's Day. I think that is a match made in heaven. And I already have a design for her in my head. So once I get the balls <laughs> or I let my profile grow a little more, I am actually thinking of um, contacting her, but I don't know how to go about it yet. So yeah, put some suggestions down below if you have any ideas as to how I should go about that. But to answer your question, ugh, he's not a girl. So maybe, obviously, we could do like a wallet or something. And he's also dead. But Peter Steele, if he was still alive, I, I don't know if that would be like a handbag collab or a dream musical collab. Like even if I did like a cameo vocal or something on one of their songs, oh, I would die. And if I did a like a wallet, obviously, because <laughs> why would Peter Steele have a handbag? <laughs> But yeah, black and fluoro green, oh my god. I'm just dying for someone that I work with to choose these colors, please. Okay, next question is from a solitary dancer. Hey, Evelina, love your vocal covers and the band sounds great, thank you. Who has inspired you most as a vocalist and or musician? <laughs> I think you can tell from the previous comment who that's going to be. But before I actually found Typo Negative, I was a massive fan. I know Pity Steele is probably going to roll over in his grave if I say this, but I'm a huge him fan. Um, I loved Billy Below's vocals, and I know that Peter Steele was a huge influence um, for Billy as well. So, yeah, when I discovered like Razorblade Romance, you know, where he's in like this similar faux kind of jacket looking all feminine, all androgynous and sexy, Urgh. he had me before I even heard his music. I was like, damn, <laughs> who is that guy? And then when I listened to their tunes, I obviously fell even more in love with their music. So, vocally, I loved that, that kind of overdone breathy thing he did, you know? Like, gone with the sin, my darling. The yodels, the, the deep inward breaths, I love that. And I actually wish that I was like more expressive. So Von and I are currently working on new tunes as we speak, he's actually in the recording studio. Um, so we've got three songs now that we're working on. This new one is so exciting. I can't wait to um, get it out. 
I don't want to. I, I don't want to give anything away, but it's a really catchy song, and yeah, I hope to be more expressive in um, my new vocals because I, I felt I went too much into the classical training and just, just too worried about it being perfect. So in when we record for these new songs, I just want to. Obviously, I'm going to warm up and stuff, but I just want it to be a bit more raw, a bit more real in the moment, just more expressive. So yeah, vocally, obviously Billy Below and um, Peter Steele, some female bands. It's, oh, it's kind of tricky to, to pinpoint it down because a lot of the singers that I'm into, I sound nothing like and I have a, I think I have a limited range. So like whenever I try to sing, you know, Evanescence, who I'm really into, or um, Epica or Nightwish, I'm like, I can't take that. Um, but it doesn't mean I can't appreciate it and take it in and it just does somehow kind of like come out whether it just be in the way like I lay on my harmonies or something. So yeah, there are a few bands that um, I'm into and have heavily influenced our music. Wicked Villainous asks, have you ever thought about expanding on your jewelry? I know you already have the artwork pendants. Just wondering if you thought to add more beyond the artworks. Probably not. They are so expensive to make. Like my pendants cost me probably five grand to get made and that they, <laughs> They sell okay. If you're watching this video, <laughs> head to my website and check out my pendants. I'll probably do an upcoming video on them because I've just kind of realized that like a lot of people, as I said in the first video, don't actually realize that I have like over a hundred products. Um, that's my fault. I got to work on my marketing. <laughs> I had children. Time is so fucking precious. Oh my God, you have no idea. And there's so many cool brands doing it like better than I probably would. Like, look at this lovely pendant. This was made by Halloween 13. She's a girl in Australia who sent me some lovely stuff and these cute little bat earrings. Look at that. There we go. Check it, check it, check, check my bling. Um, and like Rogue and Wolf and Worship 13. This, I can't compete with that. And frankly, I don't want to. My heart isn't in jewelry. So I love wearing jewelry. I love collecting jewelry, but I don't, I don't know. If I come out with a whole jewelry line, then obviously I'll just delete this video. Okay, I have no idea how to pronounce this name, but this lovely lady asks, I'm wondering if As Angels Bleed have ever considered touring Canada. So yeah, the whole live band thing was put on hiatus for quite a, well, two, three years while I was busy being pregnant, <laughs> for lack of saying that. <laughs> Any other way. Probably not. Um, we're working on new music as I've been saying throughout this video, but I don't want to repeat myself too much. So yeah, watch part one if you want to hear me chat a little more about the band. We're working on new tunes, but I can't see tours. I can see video clips. I can see live like performances being filmed in the comfort of my own house. <laughs> okay, so Janine asks, I'm kind of late, so I don't know if you have started filming. I have, but it's okay. <laughs> I love your channel, thank you, and your designs. And I was wondering if you are considering planning to make, wow, this is a long question, to make any other items, example, YouTuber themed clothing or shoes. I don't know. At the moment, my heart is with these beautiful bags. Have you seen this one? This is Riri Phillips bag. Let's just talk about that for a second. Look at the purple. It's so, it's so very pretty. <laughs> the drink one. <gasps> Look at that. God. Um, yeah, so I'm enjoying what I'm doing. There's possibilities there, but I feel like I need, or I would need someone else to get involved. Like there's a lot of behind the scenes in having something manufactured from actually like sourcing a company and then getting like multiple samples made to actually check their quality. And like this process can take months and months and months for each new product. So I need to establish my brand a little more. That's where you guys come in by supporting me. Never say never. I don't know what's going to be next. Like I'm heavily into clothing. I'm heavily into shoes, <laughs> especially high shoes black, shiny, high shoes. Oh my God. Look at Kat Von D, for example. She started out specifically as a tattoo artist and then branched out and out and out and out. And now she's got like this makeup empire. It's incredible. So I'm sure if you had have asked her if that was her direction, like 10 years prior to it happening, you know, she wouldn't have seen that coming. So I don't know what the future holds. I just, I just hope it's fun and creative. Okay, next question is from Nick. How long did it take you to get your makeup perfected? How long did it take you to get used to doing goth makeup? Perfected? I don't know. I don't know if this is perfected. You guys tell me, I like, 
seriously i missed so many elements of this up i nearly gave up and <laughs> didn't film tonight because i'm like i can't handle this i'm talking about winged eyeliner ending up on the top of my lid and then like i used the black duo glue and it ended up in the bottom of my lashes and just looked like black smudges everywhere and i wasn't sure about these lashes and then i put this new diamond crushes by lime crime and i'm like i don't know if i like it i'm such a perfectionist when i fuck it up i get really upset <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. I've been doing makeup since I was like 15, so like, you know, it's a good 15 years there that I've been doing it. So if you're just starting, just be patient with it. Makeup that I used to do was like just black eyeliner, you know, so it um, it evolved very naturally over, over time. And I can remember watching YouTube videos, like when YouTube was just starting, that was the main thing I did. Like I just looked up um, people that, the term YouTuber like didn't even exist, but I was watching like a few people and just like, following what they did with makeup and like, you know, learning how to put black in the crease and shading, shade, shade, shade people. Okay, next question is from Dana. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Big fan of As Angels Bleed. Will we be releasing another album or will there be any acoustic tracks released? Just due to time, we won't be able to release an album in one hit that <laughs> those days are gone, people. So what we will be doing is just releasing single, 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 you know, probably a few months between each song. We might compile them together and then eventually, you know, rename it as an album kind of thing, but we won't have like this big unveil because um, there's just so many things that I'm doing and other projects that Vaughn is working on, looking after the kids. Um, there's just not enough hours in the day to do that, unfortunately. Acoustic tracks, absolutely. Whether they be covers or just like acoustic covers of As Angels Bleed songs. Um, I've actually got some footage that I need to put on YouTube. They're just, it's just audio files, but um, we did this really cool acoustic show. So I might put them on my channel. Comment down below if you'd like to hear them. Kate Strange asks, I love asking this two part question. What do you splurge on the most and what do you refuse to spend money on? Makeup, 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 and makeup. Oh my God, I just found a store at my local shopping center in Tamworth. I'm like, what? Even my best friend Lisa was like, they sell Lime Crime. I can't even get that in Sydney. And they said, I'm like, yep, bitch, see? Countryside is good. <laughs> um, so yeah, makeup. I might go out and every day just buy new mascara or eyeshadow. Oh my God, you can never have enough, right? <laughs> Don't tell me. I'll secret, okay? Things I refuse to spend money on these days seem to be eyelashes. Like I will go to AliExpress <laughs> and get like five for a dollar and I'll go into a proper shop and they'll be like $12.95. I'm like, are you fucking serious? No, that, no, that, that is too much. All right. The next question is from Matheus. Hey Matheus, hope you're enjoying your book. How did you form As Angels Bleed? You know, it's been so long, I can't even remember. If I asked for on this, he'd probably know because his memory is a lot better than mine. It was very, very organic. And the name came about after we had several other names chosen. Um, one was Star Chamber. I can't recall the others, but we were working on a previous project, which was called Daisy Chain. And we kind of, that was more punky. So we knew we wanted to kind of slowly move away from that. And we felt like we were evolving um, as our image was going darker and darker and darker. It just made sense that our music would eventually go there as well. So in the process of kind of finding the sound for As Angels Bleed, even though we didn't have the band name yet, the music was getting darker and darker and darker. It took a few years definitely to find our sound. And in that time, we kind of didn't release anything. We were just, we were writing a lot because Von and I are prolific songwriters. Um, we we're producing a lot, but we both had to kind of learn how to produce, how to write kind of like new metal, gothy music, you know, because Von having a very 80s kind of influence, 70s, 80s influence, and me having like early 90s pop to let's say 80s influences as well. Um, it, it was natural for us to write kind of poppier music, if that makes sense. So we kind of had to learn how to make music dark and, you know, learn, like obviously we're both music teachers, so we didn't have to, I'm not saying we had to learn theory, we knew that, but we had to learn how to write music that felt dark, that felt solemn, that felt macabre. And, you know, there's, there's a little more to it than, you know, just using a minor key. 
Um, yeah, so we really experimented with that using a lot of composite scales. I know Von uses for his um, guitar solos and just really experimented with including a lot of dissidents in our music and um, some of our previous projects were always missing that. So an example would be, let's say within Temptation, they're gothic, but they're not sad or not all the time. Sometimes they are sad. Let's, uh, let's say they don't write with dissidents. There's something I find incredibly romantic about pairing symphonic orchestrations with dissidents. It just, oh, it sounds evil and it speaks to the dark, dark, darkness within my soul. So we, we really had to learn how to capture that sonically. How do we sound like Demi Borger when they do it? So we, we, we really tore apart a lot of our favorite albums, a lot of our favorite songs and analyzed what they did. So in that sense, as Angels Bleed's sound, oh, that's a mouthful to say, developed organically, but at the same time, it was like a predetermined organicness, if that makes sense. Like we knew where we wanted to end up. We didn't know how to get there. So it was quite a journey, quite a musical journey. What who inspires your look? Oh God, there's so many people that I follow on Instagram. Death Candy, she's she's total freaking babe. I love her witchy style. I definitely just love the whole new goth look. So anyone that I find that has like a witchy dark, a culty kind of vibe. I'm like, ooh, follow. <laughs> Xavier asks, where did I get my piano from? I actually have no idea if Von got that. I'd have to ask him. Sorry. <laughs> Silverbat65 says, what made you decide to make a YouTube channel? Hmm, well, I've had one for pretty much forever, it seems. <laughs> but I think the first video I would have put on had something to do with a competition that I would have run, be it um, the one that I did with him or Cradle of Filth. There was a signing for both of those bands that I was involved with a few years ago so they were probably the first videos that I uploaded not necessarily the reason why I started a channel but I wasn't being as prolific with my videos back then as I am now I don't know why I wasn't like I, <laughs> I had so much time back then I could have made a video every day she also asks would I consider making a coffin bag hell yeah um, I've actually got like a kind of mock-up for that already so I'm just waiting for someone that I work with to kind of request that as the shape. Again, I'm not at the point where I can have my own designs made because they are so expensive and I really need the help of the people that I'm collabing with to get the products out there. What perfume do I wear? My favorite perfume at the moment is Black Opium. Oh, it's quite expensive but it's like one of those real proper French perfumes where you spray it on and it stays on you all day it's lovely and it's a really I don't like sweet perfume so it's a really kind of dark sensual smell okay Paula asks do you have a favorite traditional painter also in general which artists inspire you the most um, for color schemes for my artworks I've always been really inspired by Euronymous Bosch I like his burnt oranges the, the just the burnt palette in general is something very evil about his color schemes um, so I've always been drawn to his work more modern illustrators that I really admire are Victoria Francis I remember when I started to do my art I was like blown away by her stuff and I just kept seeing it everywhere she's got a really good agent and publisher um, and the other one is um, Louis I don't know if I'm saying his last name correct so apologies if I'm not but Louis Royo right where he's yeah he's phenomenal check him out if you don't know his work Okay, Shara asks, hello beauty, I have a couple of questions. The first is about your amazing singing voice. Oh, thank you. Did you have vocal training to refine your skills? Um, yes and no, not in the beginning. Uh, a lot of what I do, photoshopping, singing, makeup is all self-taught. I seem to be one of those creatures where I really enjoy learning how to do things myself, you know? When help is needed, obviously I, I ask for people to step in and how the fuck do I do that? With singing, um, I got my vocals to a point but yeah, then when I really started to struggle, um, I did have someone help me um, and I got some classical training. I think I went a bit too far with it. And as I mentioned, you know, a few questions earlier, I got more range. I got like a smoothness in my voice, but then I kind of lost a bit of personality. So I'm trying to bring that back in the new recordings that we're working on. The next part of her question is, have I been to university? No, I have not. Again, the idea of leaving school to go back into another kind of schooling system was not for me. The idea of that was torture. So no, I left school. I've, I was 
been working since I was 14 so I've always had part-time jobs when I left school went into full-time jobs at music shops or started teaching guitar um, and then eventually working at Bond school as a private guitar teacher and singing teacher so yeah I've been lucky to be self-employed pretty much Apart from like the very early years, like 14 to 18, um, pretty much from 18 onwards I've been self-employed and I'm now my own boss. Yay! <laughs> okay, Megan asks, Hey Evelina, hello. What are some of your favorite novels? And oh my god, Dre, I know. <laughs> yeah, so that collaboration with Dre Renane has just been announced. I have finished designing her backpack already, so we are in the process of having her sample made. And yeah, hopefully it won't be too much of a wait for that to be released. It's really exciting. <laughs> Shit, I'm not really a reader. Like, yeah. <laughs> Bond's got like a lot of books over on our bookshelf. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to read, but my memory's so bad, I can't even remember what the books are that I used to enjoy. As a like a early kind of adolescent, I really did enjoy, and they made us read it the first one anyway in school, was um Tomorrow When the War Began. So that's an Australian um author. It's more, yeah, it's like a teenager kind of book but I did reread them I think there's like five or six books I really enjoyed them and they made it into a movie rather recently which I loved as well Jeez asks love everything about you well thank you my question is do your kids ask questions about how you dress and look so I kind of touched on this on the goth mum tag video that um I created so if you haven't watched that video um go over and give that a little watch um I think Steele is too young London is definitely too young like he's only one <laughs> so he's not really even talking yet still really likes makeup at the moment and he'll come over and ask for like black eyes like mummy um or purple <laughs> but that's what he sees all the time you know daddy's always wearing black mummy's always wearing black to him it's just normal and he's just such a sweetheart you can tell that he's just going to be a really creative soul he's very open-minded so yeah to answer your question no not really brian asks love you and your music thank you when will new music be coming much love from america so i've already addressed that very soon we're working on three songs which we're very excited about Okay, next question from Noni. Hmm, here's one. What was your first gothically inclined thing that you purchased with your own money? Oh, okay, I'm gonna say <laughs> these damn Hot Topic Mary Jane patent shoes that I kept buying. And I kept buying the wrong size because, you know, I hadn't really purchased um, anything online before. I was obsessed with Hot Topic. Hot Topic and lip service, seriously, I was like a silent partner for them in the early 2000s. I put so much money into those companies. But yeah, with Hot Topic, I bought these little patent Mary Jane shoes. And they were my first kind of like gothy shoes. They had like a hot pink lining on the inside. They were really cool. Anyway, they were too small. I went up two sizes. They were still too small. I'm like, what the fuck? So I gave up because it was like $30 a postage each time. That was the first thing I can remember buying. Sadly, never got to wear them. <laughs> Hi, she also asks, what's my favorite type of candy? This is gonna sound really embarrassing and it's so like not goth, <laughs> but I love Kinder Surprises. If you wanna send me chocolate, send me them. I love the, the milk and the, the dark chocolate and it's not too sweet, it's just right. So yeah, and then I give the toy to my son. <laughs> Okay, Mavis has a random question here. You're stuck on an island with a cloning device and make several clones of yourself. What do you do and why? A, make a human chain and swim around to find help. <laughs> B, cannibalize them. C, start a small civilization on the island. Hmm. Well, if it's a small island, we're probably going to run out of food damn fast. So I'm going to go with B and say cannibalize them. Sounds like fun. Do not take me seriously, people. Okay, the next question is, what inspired you to start creating music? You said you were punkier when you were younger. What other phases had you gone through before becoming a bat? What made you go full on goth goddess? Oh, I like that title. <sighs> Thank you. There's like 50 questions in there. What inspired you to start creating music? I never like, you know, I started playing guitar, obviously, so that, that kick-started everything. But I never just went, oh, I want to be like a rock star, or a songwriter or anything like that. It just happened very naturally, like when I learned how to play guitar, I picked that up very quickly and I just, I thought everyone did it. I thought everyone could songwrite, you know? And then when I had my first lesson with Vaughn, I pretty much just played him all these songs that I'd made up. He's like, how long have you been playing guitar? And I'm like, oh, about three months. And he's like, how many songs have you written? Oh, about 15. And <laughs> so he was impressed. And apparently that wasn't normal. <laughs> so I think I'm the only student to date and he's been teaching for a long time. That's 
come into the school that's been like such a naturally prolific songwriter so that that's really nice and um, he is the same so he completes me <laughs> yeah we're both naturally gifted songwriters and um when we come together it it works really well so yeah i hope that answers your question i was punkier i had like shaved head orange or we'll try to find a photo and i'll put it up somewhere so you can um have a look um, other phases, I don't know, I kind of went from like alternative punky and then just very gradually over to goth, just with more and more and more and more and more black. Um, now my wardrobe is all black, but it was very organic. I don't even think when it was happening, it's not like, oh, I want to be goth. You know, I didn't pigeonhole myself or, you know, deliberately say, oh, I want to be goth. It just, you know, it just happened. And then when you look back at it, you're like, oh, of course. <laughs> just one of those things, you know, you like what you like and I like black. Crystal, my friend Crystal asks, were your goals and aspirations as a teenager slash young adult different to what you were doing now? Um, yeah, definitely. When I was younger, it was all about the band. There was nothing else but writing songs. Well, at that time I was playing guitar, so I didn't really see myself as a singer. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't think I was any good. Some days I still don't think I'm any good. <laughs> so that's why I get a little bit uncomfortable when people are like, oh, you're such a good singer. I'm like, really? Okay, uh, and I need to stop doing that because like, you know, I am a singer. I worked really hard to, to get where I am and then it's just, it's myself that is putting me down. Not you guys, you guys are like, you, you're really cool. I'm like, thank you. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. It, it took a few years for me to transition from just a guitarist to a singer because I guess, um, cause I didn't have that confidence. I didn't see myself being the front woman of a band. I <laughs> saw myself hiding behind a seven string mahogany guitar. So that took a few years to kind of develop. And you know, obviously having kids has changed. It's like the most life changing thing you can do. And kind of the direction that my business is going in now allows me to, you know, film videos for you guys late at night when the kids are in bed and design things when the kids are asleep or during the day. What I'm doing now is much more suited to my life with children. Um, I can't imagine touring for long periods of time and leaving them behind and missing out on all of that, you know? They grow up so quickly. <coughs> Chowy B asks, how can a mum like you with two kids make time for all the great things you do? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Someone said that there must be more than 24 hours in my day and yeah, <laughs> maybe there is. I just have a really great husband that supports what I do and when I say, hey, I need to go do something, he looks after the kids. Like right now, I think he's making me a cup of tea. That's awesome because he knows I've been talking nonstop. Serendipity asks, what is your favorite piece of furniture or artwork or thing in your house? Right now, it's this raised by bats couch that I'm sitting on. Like it has freaking bats on it and that's cool. Three bats. Um, yeah, it's probably my favorite piece of furniture. Furniture. Oh, I think I mean furniture from Haunt. <laughs> furniture. I like that. <laughs> And it is actually horny. Look at that. Dream gig or venue? Oh, obviously Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Roberta asks, hi love. Um, hi, I love you. Oh, that's nice. Where are you headed spiritually? What are your beliefs if it's not too personal? No, it's not too personal. I'm an atheist. That's about all I have to say on that. <laughs> okay, Rainy Days asks, how did you meet your husband? So I think I, I went into this in video one, so make sure you're watching that as well. Um, so he was my guitar teacher, that's how we met. Have your kids noticed you're a supreme gothiness? Um, again, touched on this a few questions before. What we are is normal to them. So if anything, they probably notice everyone's supreme normalness. <laughs> she also asks, can you be too old for goth? I don't think so. I think like goth is a state of mind, not an age. So, you know, you can be five and want to wear black eyeliner and you can be 80 and I probably will. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be doing YouTube videos when I'm at that age, but um, yeah, don't let anyone tell you you're too young or old to look how you want to look. Dawn asks, top five favorite bands. Oh. At the moment, I'm really enjoying Clan of Zymox. Typo Negative does not leave my CD player. I really enjoy Cradle of Filth. Huge Marilyn Manson fan. And let's throw in a female band there. Oh, yeah, let's go with In This Moment. Love the new album. Philippa, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, says, do I prefer silver or gold? Silver all the way, baby. Ali, Ali, 
Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I need to know if the collab with Aurelio is going to happen. <laughs> or how did you get started in the goth scene? What were your baby bat days like? Never say never regarding the collab. Is it happening? I don't know. I'll have to contact him and, and let you know how that goes. How did I get into the goth scene? It, again, I kind of like touched on it throughout the whole video, but it's very aligned with the music that I'm into. So and that I've been listening to over the last 10 years. So being very captivated by what Villy Villa and him were doing, you know, when you watch the videos and they're so dark and you know, in that Joy and Sorrow video where he's got those dark eyes, I'm like, oh my God, how do I look like that? So I would say for me, the transition into this lifestyle came from music. Mackenzie asks, I was wondering how you made it through pregnancy as a goth mama. I'm pregnant with my second baby, congratulations. And trying to maintain my style is so hard. I'm so tired of wearing the same plain black t-shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, girl, just wear tights on a, a black t-shirt. With steel, I kind of abandoned my style. You've heard me talk about, you know, dealing with depression and then postnatal depression and losing myself throughout the pregnancy with Steele and after his birth and then kind of refining myself after the birth of my second child London I lost my style during the first pregnancy but I didn't care you know <laughs> with the second one um yeah I was all over tights 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 you just got to try to find cool black maternity wear but yeah it's hard it's hard and you know when you're pregnant you feel fat and you feel like a fat whale you don't feel like getting dressed up and I don't know how I would go doing like makeup and YouTubing like now if I was like nine months pregnant I wouldn't be sitting on this chair filming videos at 11 40 at night you know we do want oh one or two more kids so that's gonna be tricky. Hannibal Ghostbuster asks, hello, I want to know if you have any style advice for us baby bats, please. I love your channel and you're absolutely wonderful. Oh, thank you. Oh, style advice. Just go with what you like, you know? Find something and make it work for you and, you know, find inspiration, but don't copy people so much that you just look like a little clone of them, you know? Do something, but do it in your own unique way. You know, that's my advice. Find yourself through being inspired by other people, but don't copy them. Nemi asks, congrats on the Drake collab. Thank you. There are so many types of vampire myths, lore out there, examples. Some burn in some light, some don't. Some transform into animals, etc. But what's your favorite type of vampire? Hmm, definitely not the ones that sparkle like in Twilight. Although I, I am a fan. I just had that on Breaking Dawn earlier, so. <laughs> That should have been marketed as a romance more than a vampire movie. So yeah, don't like the ones that sparkle. Definitely like the ones that actually bite other people because vampires are supposed to drink human blood, not animal blood. Oh my God. I like the ones that have a strong underlying sexuality to them because I think a big part of vampirism is tied in with sexuality and that's why Twilight didn't work for me because they completely removed all of the sexuality. I mean, like, you know, they tried to put it back in in a PG way, but it doesn't really work. You know, give me true blood. Give me like proper adult vampires that have sex. I don't like vampires that don't have like genitals, you know? <laughs> like Interview with a Vampire, you know how that, like, that's the, like, I love, I love, love, love that movie, but um, it is missing that kind of like raw, animalistic, like sexuality that I like my vampires to have. I do really like the transforming into any animals, especially how they did it in um, Dracula Untold. I love how he just changed into a flock of bats. That was really, really cool. I would kind of like to take some elements out of my favorite, you know, vampire TV series or my novels or movies and then make like one ultimate vampire. Charlene asks, what are your favorite gothic clothing brands? I love the way you dress on your channel. Thank you. I haven't bought too much clothing recently and I buy a lot of stuff that isn't like name brands as well, like this jacket. Don't know who it's by, wasn't expensive. Um, but when I have bought from brands recently, as I mentioned in the first video, Killstar is one of my favorite, like, 
how can you not like kill style there's just pentagrams on everything that is cool in my book really interested in punk rave as well again i think i said this in the first video i haven't bought anything from them yet but i've been eyeing a whole bunch of stuff and even though it's a bit more kind of like rockabilly i do like hell bunny i think is the name they've got some really cool jackets that look like they would um be real cozy for winter <laughs> Bond's just joined me, so if you hear random laughing, it's him. Rebecca asks, I'm new to your channel and I love your style. Thank you. My question is, do you have a lot of goth friends in your area? And if not, how do you cope with not having people around you who also live your lifestyle? Well, that's where you guys come in and Instagram comes in. Um, I don't have any goth friends. Like, as you know, we just moved to a new town and we haven't really made any friends beside our neighbors and they're not alternative in any way. They're just normal. <laughs> natural normal it's completely fine so yeah there is a huge disconnect for me as i don't have any friends in the goth subculture but i have a lot of friends online and a lot of the people that i collab with um obviously make me feel connected and somewhat loved sometimes i don't know what the fuck i'm saying hey most of the time i just <laughs> <laughs> one's like what the fuck are you saying <laughs> All right, you'll have to help me with this question. Julieta asks, story time of how you listened to Type O Negative for the first time and who showed you the band? That was you, wasn't it? We had this conversation. I can't remember the first time because my memory is shit. I can't remember yesterday. Like, <laughs> you ask me how I listened to a song 10 years ago for the first time. Girl, you're crazy. Can you remember your first time? I can remember playing Type O Negative to you. I can't remember that. Yeah? Yeah. Slow, deep, and hard album. Mm. Yeah, the real punky stuff. Yeah, punky See, stuff. I probably wouldn't have liked it because I don't like the Halloween in Heaven. I don't like. Yeah. There's a few typo. Like I love typo, but there's there are a few songs that I don't like too much. Yeah, Angry Inch. <laughs> yeah, that Angry Inch. <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> uh. Emily asks, what lipstick are you wearing? So if she's talking about the video where I asked you guys for questions, that would be Immortal by Black Moon Cosmetics. It's one of their metallic lipsticks from the Metal Trinity that they released. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna put in what he just said. He's so inappropriate. You do not want to know what he just said. <laughs> Jesus, Vaughn. They want to know. Exactly I think he likes my makeup. What are some of your favorite makeup and clothing brands? I've already said clothing, makeup. I'm in love with the two palettes I have from Kat Von D. Really keen to try out her Locket foundation. Um, I use Rimmel for eyeliner. Yep, yeah, Vaughn's shaking his head. Like, yep, yeah, can't wait for that. Maybelline. A lot of the brands I use are just like normal um, supermarket brands, you know. Next. <laughs> Okay, the next question is how long have you been designing handbags and a hint on what the next future project is? I don't even know. I like to keep it so fresh. I don't even know what the fuck I'm gonna do next. Keeps me on my toes. <laughs> so yeah, I have no idea. If they watch part one, I would have already answered this. You guys can already feel my personality changing. I'm not, I'm like, I'm like not serious anymore because like... <laughs> You're in here. I walked in my room. Yeah, but humbug. Yeah, I already answered how long I've been designing it in part one, so head on over and watch that one. Do a husband tag with the wedding photos. I know, I've been saying I'm going to do that for ages. We need to do that. Sure. Right on. We really need to do it. I want to see if I fit in my wedding dress. I fit in your wedding dress. <laughs> I want to see that too. <laughs> if, wow, if you fit in my wedding dress, you've lost weight. <laughs> Just Miss Jamie asks, I'd love a house tour and a dip in that amazing pool you have. Yeah, so we bought a heater so for it. <laughs> so would we. I know, can you come and babysit so Bon and I can go and swim in our pool? Um, but it just wasn't cutting it. It's so cold here that it still wasn't warm enough. And I don't know if it's something psychological, but it's like I didn't want to like strip off and be naked and then go for a swim in winter. It's <laughs> I want a hot spa, I want candles, I want yeah, hot chocolate um, or brandy or something like that. I do not want to go for a swim, even in a heated pool. So we haven't been using it too much. But yeah, a house tour is coming up as well. We just like we have to finish my walk-in wardrobe where there's a bit more painting to do and stuff like that. So. 
I probably just need to do it in like several parts and film it for you guys. Maria asks, what's the first thing you think of when Halloween is just around the corner? Well, this year I'm thinking of pumpkins and just carving a jack-o'-lantern because, huh? Yeah, pumpkins, of course, pumpkin soup. Because um, I think Steel's of an age where he um, could have a lot of fun with that. So yeah, I might film that for a YouTube video and Halloween's just around the corner. It's fucking kind of is, it's July and that's in October. It's like three months away. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Angel Nightmare, hey, your channel is cool and your makeup is scary. Congratulations on 4K, thank you. I recently discovered you on Instagram and I love your channel. Oh, thank you. All right, next question. Since typo negative is a big thing for you and me, can you remember where you were when you first heard one of their songs and what made you want to find out more about them? My memory is absolutely shit, so as I previously said, Vaughn was the one that introduced me to Typo Negative. I can remember watching the black and white video clip for Black Number One, and you know, they all had long hair and just, I loved his really exaggerated jawline and the lighting really accentuated that in that video clip. Yeah, but I remember like watching that and going, oh, that's very vampy, very, very what? <laughs> I remember thinking, that's very gothic. <laughs> Who is this bad? <laughs> Typo negative. Danielle asks, okay, I have a question first. At what age did you start turning into, oh my God, sorry, but you guys are all asking me the same questions. How did your parents take the change? Any good baby bat stories? Again, the term baby bat wasn't around when I was, like when we were becoming goth and it wasn't like overnight. It's not like, Pop, oh wow, I'm goth. You know, it's not like, I feel like a lot of these with young kids it is, like they can watch a video on YouTube and like that and then the next day put some eyeliner on and go, oh goth. Like there's a lot more to it than just the aesthetic of it, you know? That's that's why I find with some people it's so real and I think that's what you guys like about myself and maybe about Bon as well. It's a passion. It's, it's passion. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's more than a lifestyle. It's it's like it's every day. It's not fake. So when you see the real hardcore goths, it's in the music that they listen to. Let's try that again. It's oh my god, I cannot speak. Basically, if you don't have a coffin in your bedroom, you are not goth. Oh, that's gonna cause shit. That will cause shit. I'm more goth than you. I'm more goth because I have a coffin, <laughs> and I'm more goth than you. And no one can tell me that I'm not more goth because it just. I've got so much more black eyeliner. Like, sometimes goths take ourselves too seriously. I like to have some fun, and I think I can do that because I have a coffin in my bedroom. Okay, Logan asks, I'm sorry if you've answered this before, but are all of your collaborations limited? Or are they permanent? I've been wondering because I'm afraid I'll miss out on something. None of my collaborations are going to be limited, but ultimately it depends on how well um, they sell. So if it takes like a really long time for us to move the first 200 bags, then yes, it is likely that we may not have that bag manufactured again. My next question is from Cheryl. How are you going, Cheryl? She was wondering if I would consider designing a bag for us older ladies maybe something in velvet Victorian goth loving your designs but so far they're a bit too young for me bloody kisses hmm never say never it depends on who I collab with um so cause my brand is well you've known me for and been supporting me for quite some time but with all the new handbag stuff that I'm doing that's all fairly new so I think to the world I'm kind of like suddenly here you know bam here I am so as you've heard me say before I can't just release designs without having someone to help me promote that bag hence the collaboration so if you can suggest some more mature people to collab with that would be really helpful I don't know if that really answered your question but <laughs> Never say never. I hope you like one of my upcoming collabs. And the last question is, can we get a sneak peek of a house tour? Yeah, I think I just need to bite the bullet and show you what I've got going on so far. Because it's not finished, but it's never going to be finished because my taste is really expensive. So yeah, I might do that and just like give you an, kind of what's happening at the moment. It's not entirely finished, but here it is, kind of tour. <laughs> Oh, that was a lot of questions, but thank you so much for asking them. I actually really enjoyed this. If you haven't watched the first one, I will link it somewhere so you can watch it. Comment down below if you enjoyed this video, press that like button. Let me know what other types of videos. I know you guys are dying to see the house tour and the bedroom tour. It's just not perfect yet. I want it to be perfect. 
So yeah, I'll get to that eventually. Anyway, Von and I are working on new tunes. I need to get some sleep. So yeah, I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Hello to all my new subscribers. We are nearly on 5,000. All right, I'll see you guys soon.